Yeah, it's always good like to hear that story. You know, you sold your house and you've been able to use that money to build your dream four-wheel drive, and yep. it's a would have been a big decision to do that. Massive decision, <laughs> like it was heavy. You know, lost pretty short. We're down here today, we're going to film another modified video. We've got a 200 series Land Cruiser today. We've got Matt's here, so tell us what it is, Matt. Mate, we've got a uh, 2019 uh, GXL 200 series. Yeah, V8. Um, V8 twin turbo diesel. Independent front suspension and solid axle in the rear. Correct. And then you got the coil springs all around. Yeah, and it just rides, yeah, it's pretty much amazing. We'll start with bar work. Down the front here, you got the big bull bar at the front. What's this one? Uh, it's an ARB Summit. Yep. Uh, bar. It's uh, it's uh, winch compatible. Running down the side into your going down bars. the side rails. Yeah, scrub bars down into the uh, to the side steps. Yeah, so it's all all pretty good. Just a bit of protection around the front and the sides. So we've got a carbon winch. Twelve. What is it? Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand um, pound big one. Yeah. So it uh, fits in nice and easy. Got a little flip lid there. Nice and easy access. Haven't uh, used it to recover myself much, but um, I did roll a. A caravan, a big off-road caravan, back on its wheels with it uh, when I was up the Cape. So that was pretty interesting. That was the first time I'd used it. Steady Type X Pros, um, nine inch, nine inch. Yeah, so they fit in perfect. I've got the front grille wrapped, so I kind of like it all blacked out and got rid of as much chrome as I could. And have you got any bash plates under there? No, it's just the standard, yeah. standard bash plate. Still plenty of protection there, though. Anyway, I don't do a lot of rock crawling in that, but um, it's definitely something on the on the to-do list. Are they just factory recovery points there? They're ARB, back, uh, ARB recovery points. Yeah, and, so you've um, upgraded them. Upgraded them and then just uh, wrapped them because they didn't like the red. <laughs> yeah, well that's why I thought they were factory because they didn't have any color yeah. on them and they, they blend into everything. Yeah. Got the GME aerial there. GME, yeah, I do have the, um, the stumpy one as well, just for like around town, but I just haven't done the switch back over yet and that worked perfect when I was um, in WA and up the Cape. Side of the vehicle, big snorkel. Yeah, so we got the Safari Air Max snorkel. And it's obviously yeah. all water sealed because you've done the Cape York, the Telly track, and Frenchman's track, and yeah. all that, and you never had any water issues. No, when the uh, when the airbox got cleaned out, it was um, pretty spotless in there, pretty which is great. So what tyres and rims setup you got on it? So we got the uh, methods, they're the double standards, the 20 plus 25 offset. Yeah. So yeah, they're an 18 by nine. Is that and um, that keeps it just within the guard? Just, it's got just, a bit out. Of, just a bit of poke, yeah. yeah. a tiny bit, which is good. And what was that, a positive 25? Positive 25, so it just popped it out a little bit off the UCAs and just gave it a bit more clearance, which was pretty good with a, with a bit bigger tyre. And then your tyre size? Tyre size, so they're a B, uh, where are they? BFG, KO2. Um, aggressive all-terrain. Yeah, they're a, the KO2 is an all-terrain and they're a 305, 65, 18. And I didn't really want to go the, the next size up to 35. I just didn't really feel not the need, the need not, not for the touring and stuff like that so yeah it works out pretty good can you fit the 35s i think you can yeah from what i've seen and heard definitely put 35s on it these are done 50,000 so far and yeah no punches been pretty good while we are on the tires run through the suspension setup because i've already had a quick look and you've got a fair suspension setup going on in there yeah so i went the uh the King GVM upgrade. It's upgraded to uh, 3.8, I think it is. So you've actually over upgraded the overall weight this vehicle can handle. Yeah, yep. yeah. So obviously everyone knows the 200s don't really have much of a kind of like a payload kind of thing. So all the mods I wanted to do, I just had to, uh, yeah, lift it up a little bit to make it, it safe it, and legal. Yeah, safe and legal. So it gave it about two, two and a half inch lift. So it's upgraded the front and back. 
uh, 400 constant springs in the back as well. Yeah. Just to handle the load from the drawers and. And what yeah. suspension have you got? What's the brand of it? King Racing suspension. And there, that's quite a um, you know top of the line brand. Good, yeah. Good quality gear. Yep. I did a bit of research on it, and there was um, BP 51s and stuff like that. But all the the um, good reviews were coming from the King setup. So. Do you find it rides better than factory? Similar. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah it's a lot a better than the factory. Yeah. It, when I was when I first bought it, I drove it back from Sydney and uh, it had, was pretty boaty. Yeah, uh, it was pretty like soft ride, and then I pretty much got suspension done straight away because I did a pre-rego. Yeah. So then it got recognised as a five-seater as well. So I did it all pre-rego, saved a little bit of money, but then it's it's approved everywhere as well. And there, the remote uh, reservoir shocks. Yeah. Because you've done a few top-end trips and that, so they're well set up for handling those yeah. corrugations and everything. When I got them custom set up they were for the weight that i told them yeah what i was doing to the car and what i was going to be doing and stuff like that and i got it all set up and did 25,000 k's around wa and everything um northern territory south australia and it was perfect did the gibb river road and between blowing the tires and the suspension setup was perfect happy you spent that extra money on the good definitely happy. worth it yeah 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 and, and it's all adjustable still so you can still muck around with it but i haven't touched it yeah and you've got the new up control arms in there too yep so we've got the black orc ucas up in there and they just uh help with the wheel alignment wheel alignment is pretty pretty spot on pretty good and then up the back it's all the same you got the remote reservoir shocks the coils yep. but you've got airbags in the back as well yeah so i went airbag man um got the bags in there just for later on when you know when it's fully loaded or if i put a van or want to tow or something like that um, but when I put all the water, fuel, food, the double stack drawers, rooftop tent, when it's completely loaded, put about 15 in the bags and it just keeps a nice, really nice ride height and really uh, stable on the road. Yeah, you can add or reduce there depending on how yeah. much weight you got in there. When there's nothing in there, I still leave probably like 5, 10 in there to, just to keep it, you know, a little bit pretty stable. Now we keep working our way around the outside of the vehicle. Uh, actually first, underneath, You've also got an exhaust under there too? Yeah, so I went um, a Manta uh, DPF back, um, full stainless, so it's twin three into a four, pretty much just straight through. Don't think it gives you much power increase or anything like that, but gives it just that little note, and yeah. then on the highway it doesn't drone whatsoever. It's just that nice little V8 kind of growl. Yeah. And then full protection down the back and give you room to carry your spares and your stuff here, rear bar. Yeah, so I went with the Kmar rear bar, uh, obviously double swing arm, the tyre and the dual jerry. So I got it colour coded and then all the black bits I got raptor coded as well to match the, the black bits and blacking out the badges and stuff like that. And, uh, Water or fuel? So with these I got 140 litre of diesel. Yeah. So because I'm not towing, I just uh, I went these for water. Yeah. So this is my drinking water, it's all filtered. Dirty clothes or rubbish bag here, you got a crash pad one on the back there. Yeah, crash pad so it fits heaps of rubbish. Nice and big there. Yep. So you've got uh, plenty of space. I usually end up when I'm on the beach, just um, you end up filling it up with other people's crap. Yeah. Which is uh, pretty sad, but always carry one of these little yeah. bags from Drifter. The swing arm's pretty good, pretty easy. Just swing that open and then you can access your back. Nice and in that. So yeah, it opens it right up. Got the airbag valves there, uh, solar to the lithium in the back. And then yeah, there's some trailer pods. Now your big obvious one on the roof here, this is your sleeping compartment up there. Yeah, mate, yeah, got rid of the swag and uh, had a crack at a rooftop tent and had it for going on three years now. Uh, had it on previous vehicle and just love it. How do you find rooftop tent life over swag life? Oh, for me personally, I'm all about rooftop tent. Yeah. Each to their own. People love the swag, but I just, I've done, I, don't, I can't remember how many nights I've done in that and just absolutely love it. Being able to um, put everything on the roof and still leave it there. Like I don't have to pull it off to uh, set Shut it up. up. That's good. So you, got, you, you do a fair bit of surfing. Yeah, heaps yeah. of surfing, heaps of beach camping. So got surfboard up there. You got a shovel up there. Yep. You got the max Max tracks over the other side. Yeah, it's good. You've still got your roof rack space then too. Yeah. So I had a, a sup on the roof, like a stand-up paddleboard. I had a mow. I had two shortboards all stacked on the roof when I did WA. 
and then you can still unclip, push it up. Everything stays on the roof. You don't yeah, have perfect. to uh, don't have to take it off. And then you got the ladder to get everything on and off too, which just clips on the side. Ah, uh, let's open it up. See have how it goes. Look. Have a look inside. Couple of holes just to poke out the uh, little awning. Pretty handy having the tailgate as well. Yeah. Can't that's be rooftop it. tents for you can't be rooftop tents for setup time. Nah. Oh. So that's it. Yeah, that's it. And you just uh, connect the ladder. And then you fit two adults comfy in there. Yeah. So you got uh, two people. You can pop your head up this end if you want to have a bit of a view that way. Or it's a little bit wider at uh, at the back. Yeah. So when you've got two people in there, it's uh, it's easy to put your heads up this end. So it goes pretty yeah. good in the rain and the wind and stuff? Yeah, with the with the wind it's great because it's got a solid front connection. It hasn't got like a loose roof or something like that, it's a fully solid connection. A um, couple times when it gets a bit windy, that little awning there, I pull the poles out and get this elastic strap which is here, which helps you pull it down. Pop that up and it just keeps it nice and tight when it's windy and then takes away all the noise and the rattle. And how do you find the mattress? Mattress is good. It was. It's it's really good now. I've got the, uh, a good quality eggshell uh, underlay. So yeah, I think you upgraded slightly from the original. Yeah, the original mattress is still there, but then I just put in a good quality fire rated uh, eggshell. Yep. Um, and it just pretty much made sleeping in here 100% better. Usually the standard mattresses aren't really that good anyways. And I've got power up here too. There's double dual USB and a SIG. So it's all heaps of power up here for charging phones. To go with the Audi Cab rooftop tent, got an Audi Cab shadow warning. So it mounts on perfectly with custom brackets. Straight onto the rooftop straight tent. Straight onto the rooftop tent so it doesn't, uh, doesn't touch the, the roof racks or the roofing system whatsoever. One thing I didn't ask with your rooftop tent, is it mounted directly onto the vehicle or do you have to have a roof rack system first? So you need, I, to get the extra rating from top of the 200, I went the, um, the Rhino back, um, Backbone yeah. system. So that gives you a little bit extra kgs, and then I went a front runner uh, heavy duty flat bar. Okay. So they're the crossbar, so there's three of them, uh, which spreads the weight perfectly over the whole roof of the car. Yeah. So yeah, again, it keeps it a pretty nice low profile as well. Um, using the factory rails and then putting racks on top of them just would have taken it too high and it just looked a bit ugly. So let's open up the awning, because you said it's a pretty quick setup, isn't it? It won't take us long. So it's a pretty quick setup. much it wow oh, yeah. that's quick yeah so it gives you good shade especially for over the back sun that's rain quick if you want to set up for lunch or a bit of shade or yeah. today when we're standing out here racing standing in the sun out. should standing have been out. under this standing out on the hot river rock so yeah, yeah it's good protection um it comes with a little center pole if you did want to you know tie it down a little bit it gets a bit windy and you've got straps all built in as well on each corner but to tell you the truth, I've had it for probably three years and I've never used the pole. Yeah, So can handle the conditions about the pole then. Yeah, so it's nice and strong, and pretty much. Yeah, right. You put yourself up on it. Exercise gym as well. Yeah, so it's a little built-in gym. <laughs> but uh, it's also got, for when it's raining and stuff, and it, uh, I don't really like cooking out of the back sometimes. Set up a little drifter table here. We've got a full LED light system through there and it's all switched in through the back so you can cook under here or yeah whatever put a little clothesline i'm amazed at how quick and easy and good that is yeah maybe i have to get one super quick and easy yeah, yeah that is good clothesline as well hang your towel or yeah. wetsuit and stuff up on that when i was living on the road a little bit it was pretty funny having all my washing hanging out after a couple of weeks <laughs> in, the dirt. in the back you got quite the draw set up here because you do you're not someone who just did up a four-wheel drive and drive around the streets you put it to use 
you've done a fair few big trips now in the time you've had it. Yeah, well, I've had a couple of four drive setups now, and um, yeah, this one was pretty much a mashup of a few different setups and just to build my dream setup. Is this a custom setup that they've designed for you, or is this an off the shelf one of their pre designs? It's a bit of both. I think the bottom section here, if you just disregard the top, the bottom section here is kind of all made out for a 200. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can have the two drawers. I've opted for a um, Dometic fridge. So it's a little 30 litre Dometic fridge, which is perfect for like day trips or yeah. a little bit of extra food on the long haul. Uh, in front of this bottom section is a 40 litre poly tank. Okay, so up near, up between this and the back seat. Yeah, so I've plumbed through to a pressure pump, 12 volt pressure pump. Yeah. And then I've just uh, hooked it up to a little cable, a uh, little cable drum there, the full pull out system. And then yeah, it's just my little shower or washing up or whatever. After you've had a surf, just cold water. Yeah, just cold water. It's what you kind of really need. It's a good little setup for um, yeah, 40 liters. How good is that? So I don't have to touch, use that for drinking or anything because I've got the back set up. Now with your drawer set up, you got, as you said, you got your fridge yep. and you got three big pull out drawers there. Yeah, so this one, which is permanent, this whole section here is permanent. It's got your full pull out drifter table. That I think everyone's pretty familiar with. Yeah. Set it up on the side. Yeah, or you just pull it out. Use it there as a workspace or yeah. a, make your lunch or dinner. This one's a big drawer which I keep for all the kitchen stuff. It's got a little lift out for everything. Yep. All kitchen, cooking, be all bits and pieces. You're it's keeping really that sort of stuff in there all the time? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Just... Try and go away every weekend or yeah. something like that. These two here are full removable. So they're two separate drawers. So you can actually take these out undo four screws, take that out, undo four screws, and the drawers and the carcasses come out. So then you're just left with a perfectly flat area through the whole car. So I just, I usually use these for when I'm on big trips. Yep. Or I take one out so my surfboards could fit there and just use one. So and this one's got like two cookers, uh, some tools, air hose, just like some gas, some sprays. Pretty much nice and easy to, to handle. Um, there's an ax in here as well. Um, little cutting blades, and fire starters and stuff like that. And then this one pretty much just uses a pantry. Yeah. So it'll have just all like your staples, cans and all that kind of stuff so you can, yeah, have it nice and easy. Just makes it so easy with a drawer set up like that compared to trying to pack boxes and bags yeah. and everything else. You got the slide out drawers, you can't beat that for comfort and touring. So heaps of space at the top, boards, got a chainsaw there, got seats down the side. One day I want to get like a emu wing so I can use those back windows. Oh, uh, yeah. That's like on the cards for one day. But yeah, still heaps of usable space. Was this car a seven seater? It was, yeah. So when I did back the- Back seats out yeah. that instead. When you do the GVM upgrade with King, it, you have to, it gets registered as a five seater too. Yeah. So you can't go back. Okay, yeah. But which for me, this is my dream car forever. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully ever, so I won't worry about putting the seats back in. Not planning on having five kids anytime soon. Absolutely not, no. <laughs> no one or two would be fine. <laughs> so you got a dual battery set up too. Have yeah. a look at that. Well, we've got triple set up. So on this side too, in the back, we've got a air compressor. So it's built in, it's an ARB twin compressor with a tank. Yep. And that's all built into the side ring in here, like it's all inside the guard. Grab that out of the little bag. Pretty much, yeah, it's just an ARB setup. Yeah. Plug that in there, and then just flip it on with the car going. Fills the tank. By the time the tank's filling, pretty much just walk around with this and with these tires. I've never really timed it, but it's super quick. And then I've got um, solar input too for the third battery. Tell you the truth, I actually haven't used solar on it yet because okay. I haven't needed to. Yeah. Because there's a 200 amp hour lithium. Yeah. So it's got a full inner drive set up in the back. Now, when you say three batteries, are we talking a starter battery and two batteries to run your camp setup? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So there's dual batteries in the front. Yeah. And then like your start battery and auxiliary. And then there's a third battery in the back, which will run, it runs the two fridges. And that is a 200 amp hour lithium. lithium. Yeah, so it lasts ages. It's just amazing on the, on the beach and when you just camped up and you don't want to move. I, don't, I haven't had to use solar yet. How long have you stayed in one spot and run your gear off on that one battery? I was over, when I was in WA, I was on a station, Warra station, and the car was set up pretty much like this on the beach. I stayed there for three weeks, but I, it was one week where I didn't drive the car. 
yeah. had two fridges running and it uh, I think it got down to 30 percent yeah right running wow. two fridges over for a week you got to be happy with that a week yeah that's more I thought you'd say three days or something uh, plenty of power so the auxiliary battery there's a couple of outlets in the back here for uh, USB and SIG so that's connected to the, the front auxiliary battery so okay. the back one's only for the fridges and then I saw over the other side you got a couple of 240 volt outlets yeah so under here like there's a the um do a close-up of it later but the battery is just there and then underneath it is a thousand watt inner drive uh inverter yeah and then yeah there's a couple of power points butted onto the front of the drawer system and then i've just got yeah some led strip lighting up here some arb strip lightings the two tones so it's orange or white it's dimmable you can have full orange full white or half half and then yeah dimmable Two switches, one's for underneath the awning and one for out the back here. This is your second fridge you're talking about? Yeah, so I've just uh, got a 50 litre Waco. If I want to do big trips, I'll take, take the middle row seats out. Obviously, it's it's not permanent, but um, just build up a couple little boxes with my mate, this little carpenter, and he uh, sorted us out. So it gives us a little bit of storage underneath. Usually uh, on a big trip, I'd have a 60 litre water bladder. Yeah, just sitting in there. So all up, I think there's like 140 litres of water on the trip, which is really good. Yeah, um, and that's usually just plumbed out here with a little tap. It's got two Anderson plugs just in here, one for each fridge. So you just pull it out. Pretty much comes out so easy. You're well set up with your fuel range, water yep. range, plenty of cold storage and yep. everything like that. Yeah, and having the false floor as well, which is on the other side as well. Uh, it's got the seats in at the moment, but I'd take that out pretty easy. And there's another setup with these as well, which is a bit higher, a bit more storage, and then we can put all that clothes and some tubs on the other side. In the front of the car, definitely the immediate thing you notice is you got plenty of room in here. So much room. What have you done? What have you got? I can see you got a few different things set up and going on. Got a ram mount over that side, which has got an iPad mini, um, pretty much just for HEMA maps and um, you know just other little bits and pieces. Uh, this side. Phone holder with a phone charger, a uh, little ultra gauge over here, um, just for you know clearing codes or um, you can read trans temp and you know volts and stuff like that for batteries and other bits and pieces. Handheld there to go over your antenna. Yeah, so that's um, a nice little unit, it's nice and easy to pull in and out. It's a magnetic bracket there. Some black duck seat covers. Yeah, these are the four, I think they're the four season ones. They're a bit of a blend. Sand mats there as well, yeah, sand grabber. Sand grabber. They're um, pretty good, nice and molded, fit really well. So on this side, we've got a, um, an aftermarket switch panel, uh, which gave me some, you know, more spaces to put some switches in. Um, so all the side lights. Both sides have got uh, LEDs and the back's got two and they're all individually switched. The front spotties in, is switched on here as well and then the light bar has actually got its own switch. And another thing I got the guys at ARB port to do is um, do the front battery connector. Can't remember what it's called, but yeah. if, the, if the cranking battery goes flat, yeah. push a little button over here and it, um, it helps crank, the second battery can help crank. Okay. Yeah, yep. so it works out really well. That's a good one to have. A little voltmeter here with a USB charger as well, which is which we popped in there. I think that's all the switches after market stuff's all steady. Another little button I like to use when I was on the highway and uh, especially overtaking road trains, it's got a little power button. I guess it's just like a throttle controller or something like that. So you push that or just call it the go fast button. You just push <laughs> it down and uh, feels like it drops back a gear and then it just gives you so much more throttle control and you just punch it around road trains and this thing's pretty heavy so you know having a little bit of help um, definitely comes into play there because I don't have any uh, engine mods or anything like that. Helps bring out the power of that V8. In the engine bay here you got the big V8. Yep. Haven't done heaps of work in here but you definitely got a few things going on. Yeah I haven't done any engine mods or anything like that. I just for me personally just didn't really need it i think a lot of people tune them and or chip them and stuff like that but i have needed that power 50,000 k's i've done in it you know in 18 months has been awesome for me the only extras really is the extra fuel filter obviously here you've got a diesel care fuel filter you yep. know, a proven catch can on the other side over there oh uh, yep drain plugs on the inside guard on that wheel there dual battery obviously do these come factory of two batteries no, no they used to i think the earlier models had two batteries and then people end up splitting them and stuff like that and then they just start doing one and then 
now you just have to uh, do the, the auxiliary tray and add a battery. So ARB, Port, um, Mark and Michael and the boys, they were just guns uh, for helping me set this up. They were good, they didn't, you know, didn't make me use all ARB stuff or whatever, I, can, I kind of gave them parts and made, made suggestions at the same time, but did all the electrical. These are all kind of yeah. all tagged, so you know exactly what's in there, all the fuses. Done a nice, neat job. You can see all your wires run through. You can just swap your fuses out there if need be. Yep, and they're all tagged too. Um, now your BC DC charger yeah, for your dual battery system. Is that what that does? Yeah, so that's the front one. So that's the the 1225D yep. uh, Red R um, with the ARB bracket. Um, so that's just for that battery there. So okay. that's for the under You've bonnet. got the Enerdrive one up the back. Enerdrive one, yeah, goes in the back. The Enerdrive one I've got does can't go in the engine bay. Okay. Um, so it's more for, you know, the wagons and stuff like that, or vans and stuff out the back. And like, this is all I've done, just clicked over 50,000 Ks and did a couple of big trips, heaps of tracks, and nothing, like, nothing touch wood. Nothing's gone wrong at all. Everything's just been so good. Yeah, it's got a solar, another solar input here. Uh, and that's for that dual battery. Okay. So I can plug solar blanket or something in for that battery. Now really, it's everything you can tell has been really well thought out by the guys who did it. It wasn't just chuck everything in there and no. hope it, you know, chuck it in and just get the job done at the time. It's set everything up perfectly with down the track in mind. Should you need solar, should you need to change fuses. Yeah. Yep. It's all well done, well thought out. I think that's just about all the mods we've run through. I must say I was super impressed with all the mods you've done to this thing and how well everything's thought out and works together it's come out unreal yeah very very happy with it like it's definitely kind of a bit more of a tourer than a, a rock crawler yeah um i'm not like the, the most confident four wheel driver we have a big tracks and rocks and stuff like what you do but it's yeah. definitely i'm um, starting to get better at it and starting to know the car a bit more set but, it up for your needs yeah and that's you know you're doing what you love doing in it yeah you know, you're still out there doing the cape and Western Australia and out the you know desert and everything else. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to do some more adventuring and you know life's pretty short. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to yeah see a bit more of Australia, but I wanted to drive it more than anything. And this is my dream car. I've, I've kind of had a couple of Toyotas and yeah, 200 was always on the top of the list. And then to be able to build it, you know, with the help of a few different companies and businesses and that. Yeah, it's always good like to hear that story, you, you know, you sold your house and you've been able to use that money to build your dream four-wheel drive and yep. it would have been a big decision to do that. Massive decision, <laughs> like it was heavy, but I've still got some money set aside for, you know, another property later on, hopefully a bit of land. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just still want to do some more travel and still want to do the desert and uh, Simpson and stuff. I think uh, Simpson and Vic High Country uh, pretty high on the list for next next round. So just quickly, what's sort of the top two or three trips you've done in this? Because we're obviously we're New South Wales mid north coast, but you've taken this over WA and up the top end of Cape York and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, spent months on the road. Yeah, for, last year four months driving from Port Macquarie uh, down to South Australia, and then going straight up the middle, Red Centre Way, you know, Ezra, Uluru, all that. Um, and then up to um, across, sorry, across to the Gibb River Road. Did the Gibb River, then did Cape Levique, and then all the way down the west coast, northwest coast, and spent about two months surfing, fishing, yeah, just living out of this, and it was amazing. Living yeah, the dream, living the dream for a good couple of months, and then yeah, the recent trip was I just did six weeks up the Cape. So yeah, I just did a little solo trip. Did the Telly right. track and the Frenchman's track, tick some of those big bucket licks ones off. Yeah, did the Creb. Frenchman's telly. Did you get right up to the tip, up to the sign across yeah. the Jardine? Was pretty lucky the border opened for a little bit, so I managed to get up there, across the Jardine, up to the tip, spent five days up around there fishing, camping, met some legendary people, like people that you know I keep in contact with now. Yeah. Um, and then ended up doing the telly track again, second time. <laughs> yeah, you told me people. that before, that's a funny one. Yeah. Twice was... on the telly track in the one trip. Yeah, well, the first time was by myself, and I was shitting myself really, like. Yeah. I uh, I had all the gear in case I got in trouble, but there was no one around to help. None of the crossings had anyone, so I did did it, and then was pretty confident the second time around. Yeah. We had 
a 79 and another 200 the people are a couple of awesome families i met so yeah that was uh, a lot more comfortable now we on these big trips you have you had any mechanical issues anything go wrong anything break i think on uh, mechanically wise everything was being pretty sweet a couple little things fell off like i lost the wheel nut um i lost the the shovel holder screw like just little things like that was pretty much all that happened at the cape uh when i did the pasco river crossing got a little bit of water inside yeah <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit of water it was pretty deep it was probably you know probably belly button and kind of i don't know i thought the key sensor was here somewhere underneath the drawers in the middle somewhere but i don't know but the car wigged out a little bit okay. when i went to start it i just had no power whatsoever it's not a nice um, spot to have no power no but then <laughs> we kind of just a little bit of thinking we started to get the manual out and i remember seeing something that if you hold the key fob to the power button you yeah. press button start yeah and i did that bang and it was come up so i don't know if it was i don't know what happened but after that it was sweet top three mods what are the top three things you've done to this car your favorite you'd maybe recommend to people that's helped you out on your travels oh top three <laughs> <laughs> um, out, of the, out of the hundred of them I'd have to say up there is definitely the rooftop tent awning combo. Yeah. Like, I absolutely love it. Um, super quick and easy set up, pack up, comfy. Another one would be obviously this whole drawer system, having the built-in water tank, built-in fridge, being removable for the top half, having like all your cooking, kitchen stuff, all just access at the back of the car and then the suspension after doing a couple of big trips the the king suspension wow like it's that, been epic that ride comfort ride comfort's insane yeah it was um super comfy um and just being confident with the, the car and you know putting it down tracks and stuff like that was pretty awesome that's a good thing with four wheel driving there's such a massive market out there yeah. that you can do what you you want to your car yeah I always see people saying they, you know, having a go at other people for what they've done to their car. But I never understand that because that's why there's such a market. You can choose and modify it yeah. how you like and what suits you. Obviously, different things are going to suit people differently depending 100%. on what they do. Yeah, I just don't understand why people want to be little people for setting up, you know, the way that works for them. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Like, I just as long as you're getting out there and having a go, or yeah, whether you're doing it in a, you know. Whatever your setup be, exactly. Whether it's you know however whatever, if you're out there and having fun, then yeah, what difference does it make? Yeah, as long as you can pull up and have a chat to someone, have a beer, and you can talk about stuff. Like you know, it's good to show people. With I get pulled up all the time about you know the the awning setup and the rooftop tent. And I'm more than happy to have a chat to people. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's not in everyone's kind of price bracket kind of thing, but. You know, it gives people something to work towards. Not everyone want. wants to sell their house to yeah. <laughs> do their dream car. <laughs> I think we've just about covered everything, haven't we? It's all for done. Oh sure, yeah. Thanks for showing us through. You've done an unreal job. I'm impressed with everything. Yeah, so cheers, many, mate. so many cool things. Because I know, obviously, we sort of known each other for a little while now, and I've seen your vehicle from the outside, but it's not until you actually talk about it yeah. and you realise how much work and everything's gone into it and you've done all through the whole vehicle yeah so definitely no more crawler so yeah. which is <laughs> yeah you're showing me the other day you got you know a dent there and a scratch there and a dent over yeah. there and it's slowly slowly uh getting beat up out the bush planning on keeping this vehicle for a while like long time your, your lifetime vehicle yeah 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 i just want it hopefully i can it'll just get 10 know. years or 15 or whatever out of it 100%. I see all our older Land Cruisers driving around. I'm like, oh, they still look awesome. Yeah. And like, I want mine to be like that one day. It's just like, it's, it'll just be old and scratched up and dinged and that, but it'll still be just like a cool old cruiser. Toyota's probably the, got to be the top one for holding their value yeah. and worth yeah. over yeah. the other brands. The older cruisers and that seem to go for the most money. Yeah. We'll pack it all up and head on out of here. Thanks for showing us around. Yeah, legend. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Cheers. You say it's good for your aura Boy, this is gonna be tough
esoteric shit We're down here today, we're going to film another modified video on Matt's 200... Did you see that fly button yeah. right in front of the lens? 